Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynette, for those of you who are new, and for those of you coming back, I'm gonna be doing a really different type of video uh, from what I normally do, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take me. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background into who I am and where I come from, and maybe that'll kind of help you get to know me a little bit better. I've done some Q&As before, and so if you have any more questions, you can go check out those videos. They might uh, answer some. I don't know how in-depth I'm gonna go, but I just wanted to guy, uh, give you guys a look into my past and my testimony for the Lord and how I became a Christian and that kind of thing. So I was born in Millersburg, Ohio, and lived in the Holmes County area for, I think, about seven years, I'm gonna say. Um, I was, I think, six or seven when we moved down to the community where I live now. I was Amish until I was around the age of 14, I think. So in Holmes County, it is um, very common up there. And there's a wide variety of Amish people. There's lots of different types of them. There's different um, ways that they believe. Uh, I would just consider it more a way of life. It's not a cult. I guess it could appear that way, but it's not. It's not something that we can, that we're tied to or that we can't leave or anything like that. It's just, it's a lifestyle. We consider ourselves Anabaptist and that our, like our ancestors would come from certain places in Switzerland and um, Germany, France area they had kind of taken a stand against some things. So if you want to look up more on Anabaptists, feel free. I'm not going to go into all that. I'm not very good at explaining all that. As far as my situation in being Amish, it is not going to be like everyone else's situation or how other Amish people are. There's lots of different varieties of Amish people. And um, for us, we understood the new birth. We understood being born again, what it means to ask Jesus into our hearts and live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Um, there are, sadly, a lot of Amish people who do not understand the plan of salvation. They just do what the church says, and that to me is really sad. All right. Um, so living in Holmes County, it was, I had a fairly normal childhood. I mean, we had church every Sunday. We went to people's houses for churches. Um, that was, that's mostly how they do it up there. They would, um, People take turns, like the church families have take turns having churches at their places. And so that's how we would have done it. We did a lot of things with horse and buggy. We got tax seeds if we had to go someplace. Um, I did a lot of traveling as a young girl. Um, I'm just blessed that I was able to be able to go travel with my family. Um, my grandparents are very frequent travelers and they're still Amish at this point. Actually, both of my grandparents are. So I went to school, uh, I went to kindergarten and first grade in Holmes County, and then we moved down south about three hours to a little Amish community. I don't really think there are any other types of Amish or Mennonites around at the time. Now, as of now, there are quite a few different um, churches, varieties of people, horse and buggy Mennonites. There's other types of Amish. There's some pretty plain groups of Amish around here. Um, but down here it was a little bit different. We would have had um, electricity, we had tractors, we had a lot of the normal things that you guys would have had. We of course didn't have uh, television, we don't have television now. There's definitely things that um, we wouldn't have had. There's a lot of different types of Amish people, so just keep that in mind. Um, maybe some of those you see are not like we would have been. And so by the age of nine, I think, I'm thinking it was nine or 10, I think maybe 10. We moved up to a Indian reservation in Northwestern Ontario as missionaries for about a year, I think my family did. My mom and her family would have lived up there in the early 80s for several years and they've been back and forth a lot since then. My grandparents, it's kind of like another home for them and they've been up there a lot and it's kind of like if you have been up there at all you leave a little piece of your heart there but um that was a really really good experience for me and for our whole family um at the time i was at that age where i would say i was coming to the age of accountability uh things were starting to kind of soak into my brain um i remember getting questions from some of the native children and I don't think I even fully quite understood some things. And yet, at the same time, I was starting to realize that 
there was a need in my life, that I had a need in my heart and that I had something missing. Because I remember it was in May of 2008, I think May 8th, I remember one night, This my story or my testimony is nothing like dramatic or anything because I would have only been like 11 or something. So one evening I just remember me and my sisters were doing something at the table and I, I just remember we did quite a bit of um, fighting or sparring back and forth. We we're just kind of grouchy and I remember just kind of being snappy and uh, just not happy. Like I, something was definitely amiss. And I remember going to my room and I think I was crying and I don't know, just kind of trying to, you know, figure out what's going on, I guess. And my parents came in then soon after that and we talked and we were crying and stuff. And they just asked that, do you want to, um, do you want to ask Jesus into your heart? Do you want to become a Christian? And I did. And so we knelt down and we prayed and I asked Jesus into my heart and just asked him to forgive me of my sins and to just um, invited him in and you guys it's the best decision that I have ever made um, to just know that God loves us so much and that he gave his only son Jesus to die in my place a death that I deserve as a sinner because everyone is a sinner and to know that Jesus saved me from that and he was willing to give his own life in my place so that I don't have to do that. That to me is just, it's amazing. Like, how, how do I deserve that? And, and so anyways, I, yeah, I became a Christian that night and that was just a wonderful thing for me. I remember feeling so happy and peaceful and excited and I remember the next day we went to the band office <laughs> might not make sense to you guys um, but there was only one village phone at the time that was like a main public phone that you could use and so I remember we went over there the next day and we called my grandparents Edwin and Edna and called my aunt and I forget if we called other people but uh, we told them about the decision that I made to live for the Lord and I just remember them being so excited for me and I remember I was excited and I was the first grandchild who had decided to uh, make a commitment for Christ and so that was kind of the start of my Christian journey and my walk with the Lord. Um, since then it has certainly not been easy. I have rededicated my life um, many a time. I know that I am not perfect and I'm gonna mess up and I know that the Lord forgives me because he says that in the Bible. He says that if anyone confesses their sins, he's willing to um, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm just so thankful for the free gift of salvation that he gives to me and that he has grace for when I make mistakes. I choose to live my life for him and live out the Bible in the way that I see is best. Um, and that's gonna be a personal choice for everyone. It's not gonna be something that I can force on anyone or that someone else can make you do. It's gonna to have to be something that you decide for yourself. And I just pray that if you don't know the Lord, that it would encourage you to read the Bible and search the scriptures for yourself. I just believe the Bible to be true. And it's just the best choice that I could have ever made. And I would just say that I'm not going to judge you for the decisions you make, just so you know that. I'm just sharing from my heart and what I believe and how it has been for me. So I hope that you guys um, understand that and can maybe see a little bit more into to me. All right, so as far as school, after we came back from Canada, I would have attended our church school again and I still have a, a church school here. And I actually only went through eighth grade. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. <laughs> Uh, most Amish children only go through eighth grade and uh, we're not Amish right now obviously we're Mennonite but we still have a really small school and it just takes quite a lot more to add high school to it um, so like take for instance my brother he is going to high school in Pennsylvania there is a, a place that he's going to and he did homeschool a couple of years too but decided to finish out his junior and senior year in uh, in a high school in Pennsylvania. So I always thought I would get my GED, um, but I never have. I've never really needed it. <laughs> so around the age of, like I said, 14 maybe, our church had been going through some struggles just, 
it's harder being Amish in a small community. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but it is. And then we had some issues that we were going through and it's, it's not, I, I feel like churches shouldn't have issues, but I do know that there are, everyone's human and there are gonna be differences in opinions and things. Um, some people had moved out. A lot of us just decided that we're gonna, you know, move somewhere else and the church was just kinda gonna go to nothing. Um, and however, we kind of got together some some of the men I think I really don't remember a lot because I was younger at the time but in the end all of us decided to just stay where we are and we would get help from some other ministers in other churches and get some help and kind of switch from being Amish to Mennonite and so that's what we did and that honestly is very much something that is unheard of you don't often hear of whole churches going from Amish to beachy as we would call it and so that was definitely a, an interesting experience um just switching over from driving horse and buggy and then starting to drive cars it was just interesting because some people would still be driving horse and buggy for a while to church others of us were driving cars already and we started dressing a little differently um there, there wasn't a whole different type of thing as far as lifestyle change. I mean, we didn't change that much as far as our conveniences or anything. That didn't change a whole lot. But anyway, I'm glad we did. I'm very happy to be driving cars and, <laughs> and everything. Before I turned 16, I was baptized. And along with some of my other girlfriends, we were baptized and joined our church, became members of our church here. And that was a personal choice that each of us makes is to become baptized and we do it a little differently than some other people do. Some do it um, at the point of um, when they become saved and I'm certainly not going to dispute on that. That is perfectly fine in my opinion. And then around the age of 16 is when we have our what we call youth group. We are old enough to kind of go do things with the youth group. Um, we have like a church youth function, kind of like any other church has. Usually they have youth groups and stuff. So um, I was 16. That's a really big <laughs> fun time, of course. And I got my driver's license and that was super fun. I also started working at a, a restaurant, uh, would have been Der Dutchman in the Waynesville area. Had a good little hall to get there. But I worked there for several years, two and a half years maybe. And that was a really fun experience. I don't know if any of you guys from the Dura are watching, but uh, that was always, I always have fond memories of that. And I feel like it taught me a lot. Um, I worked a lot of different positions in there. I was a cook, I was salad bar, waitress, attendant type of thing. Uh, I never was a waitress, as in totally, like just a server but I did most everything else there, I think, at one point or another. Uh, and that was just a good experience for me and a couple of my like youth friends and would have worked there uh, throughout the years. So then I also had several other jobs. I would help my dad out at his finish shop um, through that time. He has a spray finishing shop that he does. And at that point is when I met Nick, actually. And I don't know how much into detail I'm gonna go with that, but um, their family moved down to another community about an hour from here. They came from Holmes County as well, and they had started a church um, about an hour south of here. So our youth groups uh, were together, and I think he was about 15 at the point where he started working for my dad. He didn't work for him even a year, but in that time we became really, really good friends. He was not a Christian at the time. I tried my best to, you know, um, encourage him along in the way of becoming a, becoming a Christian and I don't know if I did a very good job of it or anything but anyways <laughs> um, at that point we were only friends though I mean we like to say that but <laughs> I do know that that is kind of where things probably started um, although we never said we would have liked each other necessarily we just got along really well but um, at that point I think by the time he quit then which would have been the following summer, not quite a year uh, before he worked there, he did make a commitment and he became a Christian. And honestly, it was the biggest change in his life. Like, he's one of those people that you could see instantly um, the difference. Um, I just remember how excited all of us were, my whole family. He was a really good friend to all of us. And it was just 
it was a really exciting time for for everyone and I know for Nick especially it was just a really momentous occasion in his life and it totally changed him and it's one of those things like for me like I never got into a lot of trouble um, mainly because well I, I did become a Christian at a young age and I was I guess fairly sheltered as far as outside stuff like I didn't have a lot of other um, interactions with other things other types of stuff or um, just I never really got into like a bad crowd I guess you could say I had my moments where I you know messed up and everything but in his life he did he had some definitely had some struggles um, before he became a Christian and I, I just remember it was just the most awesome and exciting thing when we found out that he did give his life to the Lord and it just it just changed him he totally he totally became a new person and that's just it's just amazing what the Lord can do. So after that, um, let me see, a couple of years passed. Um, we still had youth group and everything. We had our ups and downs here in church and everything. I went to Bible school a couple times uh, and that was a lot of fun for me. Um, that was usually during the winter, a couple weeks at a time. And he went along at that point. He went um, one year as well. And somewhere along the line there, I think we were around the age of 18. We kind of finally admitted or kind of discussed the fact that um, we do kind of like each other, but at that point we were way too young to be dating. So yeah, we would have gone a couple years that we liked each other. We did some things together here and there, but it's never that we actually started dating and we definitely could use maturing and I'm glad we waited, although it was hard sometimes. Um, you know how it is when you're a teenager, things are emotional and there was definitely roller coasters, as you could say, but um, around the age of, let me see, around the age of 20, I went to Virginia to work in a nursing home, Mountain View Nursing Home, for those of you who are familiar. And that was a, such a good experience for me. I will never, ever regret that. I was there for about 15 months and I worked first as a dietary aide in the kitchen. And basically it's a bunch of mostly Mennonite youth that volunteer there and give up their time, their service, and we had like dorms, you know, girls dorm, guys dorm, and we were really, really busy. Um, about halfway into it, I then decided to become a CNA, Certified Nurse Aide, and so I did the classes and everything and there again. I never had to have my GED, and that was a really good experience for me, getting to work with older people and just interacting with them. It was such a good, um, it was just a really good experience. And so that whole time, um, that was about 15 months. And so I would have been uh, 21, I guess I would say. Yeah, 21 when I was done there, almost 22 at that point. So while I was there, um, Nick and I still liked each other. We didn't have just a lot of contact, but we still knew that, you know, one day we were gonna start dating and everything. And so in November, I had gone home, I think it was Thanksgiving actually. Yeah, I had gone home for Thanksgiving and we had talked about maybe trying to, you know, get together and see each other a little bit or go do something with other people and stuff. But um, he ended up asking dad if he could uh, take me out on a date. His dad had given him permission at that point too. He was like, you know, hey, why not? So we did. We we decided we'll have a date then and then we probably won't again until I get home in February just because he was planning to go to Haiti for a couple of weeks and yeah it was just you know distance seven hours or something and so we decided we'll have a date and then when I get home we'll continue on and we had obviously a lot of phone conversations and stuff so that was awesome finally getting to date Nick um, I know that a lot of people knew about it so it's no surprise to anyone um, but so after I got home, we dated for about, let's see, from February to July, and then he asked me to marry him. And then we got married October 15th, so that was a really fast engagement. I had to like scram to get all my stuff in order. We had a pretty big wedding. We I think invited around 600 people. I don't know if that's a shock to you guys, but Mennonite and Amish weddings tend to be pretty big. So we had probably 525 people there. It was, you know, the best day of my life too. And so since then, this is going into seven years of marriage almost this fall. 
and we had two little boys since then and so that is kind of the short end of it i don't know if i'm going to continue to talk more about the marriage part of it maybe i'll talk about it more later but uh, we've had our struggles just like any other marriage does um but it's just a wonderful thing and i love nick dearly and i love our boys and so now i'm on this youtube journey and i'm not sure where it's going to take us yet um, so i hope that you guys enjoyed it and this gave you some more insight and i hope that you all could understand where i'm coming from and that um yeah that you can be blessed somehow through this that was really long thanks so much guys and i will see you later bye mm -hmm.